Hey everybody, it's Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. This is Blast Tube number 42. It is Sunday, June 16th, Father's Day. Happy Father's Day um, to all out there who are celebrating. Um, I have so much to show you today. Woo! So let's, um, let's get started. I'm not even, well, I'm not even sure where to start. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, but I don't think I have much chitter chatter. I just want to kind of like show you all the things. Um, I guess I'll start with, um, I'll start with my finish. I have one finish. Um, it is hands on design knee high by the 4th of July. Um, and this is a present, um, for my mother-in-law who follows my floss to Instagram or my my Instagram that has all of my cross stitch which is Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World um, but I don't think she watches floss tube my floss tubes I don't think she's figured that out yet so anyway I'm sending this out in a couple days so she'll have it really soon um, her birthday is June 22nd and it's for her birthday and um, here it is um, this is the tray or the easel. It's like a cookbook stand from Hobby Lobby that Priscilla is doing um, her new series on. Um, I am not 100% sold on these yet. These aren't attached. Um, but it looked like a little empty down there. So I just thought I might like put these in and maybe glue. Oh, this one's falling off and glue them in maybe, but I'm not sold on that. But um, the top part I am, I think gonna keep as is. Um, sorry guys, I feel so, <laughs> I feel so scattered. I'm sorry if this is awkward. Um, I, this is a Ships Manor fabric. Um, a couple years back, he had a, something called a mystery town stitch along. And this was the fabric that went with that. And I had, I had a whole piece of it. Um, backstory. I, I bought the stitch along. I stitched like half of it. And I, and then I realized like, I'm not gonna like, I'm, I'm not gonna ever put that in my house. Like it was fun to stitch. It was enjoyable, but I was like, what, what am I going to do with this? So I was like, you know, I don't, I think I'm going to let this go. And, um, someone, uh, a lady messaged me and she said, Hey, listen, um, I think her name was Greta. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. I think it was Greta. Anyway, she's like, Hey, I bought the stitch along in the fabric and I don't think I'm ever going to get around to starting it. Like, do you want to send me your half finished whip and I'll send you my fabric which is like clean and fresh um she's like then maybe I'll be motivated to actually finish it and you'll have a new piece of fabric and I was like yeah okay great so we traded um because the fabric is really cool but then again it's also just sat here for months and months and months while I'm like what am I gonna stitch on that like <laughs> and finally I was like uh I I saw this pattern and I was like maybe maybe yeah I think that could work so to me it's like a you know blue clear blue day with uh, white fluffy clouds um, is kind of the look I was going for so I switched I think every color <laughs> just about that was called for on this pattern for various reasons I was just trying to stitch from stash and I also um, some things just weren't working. Um, like I actually did have one of the called for colors, which was Gentle Arts Piney Woods. And I used it just right here on top of this, uh, I don't know what you call that. I think it's grass. It's not a hay bale. It's, I think it's just grass. Anyway, there's just one strip of it right underneath the barn there. Piney Woods was called for, um, the corn stalks. But mine was brown. Like, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it was like, I mean, it's greenish brown, but it's mostly brown. And I don't know any corn stalks that are brown. So I, even though I had that color, I swapped it out and did something different for the corn stalks. 
Um, some of it's DMC and a lot of it is uh, Color and Cotton, Gentle Arts, Weeks, just a mishmash. I just tried to match like the spirit of the color that Kathy had called for. I didn't do any like crazy design changes. It's it's all in like keeping with the spirit of her design. I did have to change um, on the flag, the white on the flag. It called for ecru. Um, and this pattern, like her, her model is stitched on like a nice like tea, coffee dyed kind of dirty brown linen. And um, I think the ecru would work on that. But my fabric being so bright and colorful, the ecru just looked like a dirty, like creamy color. It wasn't working at all. So I flipped that out for like some 3865 DMC. And made it just brighter. Um, so there it is. That's going out in the mail soon. Like in the next day or two. Um, I'm very happy with... I'm very happy with it. Um, it's a Priscilla inspired finish, of course. But my, gra my grandma, no, my mother-in-law... Um, she actually lives in a farmhouse. Um, she lives in Illinois in a farmhouse and she grew up on a farm. Um, a lot of people in her family are still farmers and, um, they, you know, farmers tend to rotate their crops every few years, but they grew corn quite often. And, um, even now, like, even if their crop, like for the year is like soybeans, they always, grow like a patch of corn, sweet corn to eat. So, um, I just, when I saw the pattern, it just made me think of her and I know that she will really like it. And she's a very, very special person and she deserves it. She deserves my hours of time <laughs> and I know she'll appreciate it more than others. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I can't wait to, to see her reaction for her birthday. Um, so I made her that and then I also made her a quilt, uh, which I can show you guys because I haven't sent that out yet either. I'm going to send them together, obviously. Um, she's the one who really pushed me to like get a sewing machine and start quilting. I kept talking about it for like months and months and months, probably for like a year. And she was like, um, okay. I'm going to buy you a sewing machine for Christmas, like pick one out. And I was like, no, 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 you, you're not. And she's like, no, I am. <laughs> so anyway, she wanted me to, um, I wasn't sure how I was going to take to quilting. So I bought a cheaper machine to start with. So I bought like a $150 machine on Amazon. It's actually, um, I've been meaning to tell you guys about that. Um, it's a brother. It's a C... I think it's CS 6000 I, um, it's about 150 bucks. It, it, it can fluctuate. Sometimes it's like 154, but it's right around there. It's a very basic beginner machine. I highly recommend it to anybody who is wanting to like dip their toe into quilting or sewing and not wanting to invest in like a 300, 400, $500 machine until you know if you're going to like it, if you're going to be any good at it, if it's going to be something you really want to continue with. Um, I've made six quilts on mine and it's served me really well. I, now that I know I really do like quilting, I think I will eventually upgrade to a, a nicer machine. Um, not sure when, but at some point I will. But, um, I mean, I'm, I've made six quilts and I'm, I've got more in the works and I have no plans to get rid of it like right now. Um, so anyway, if you're wanting to find a more affordable way to like dip your toe in, I really recommend that machine. It comes with a walking foot for quilting. It comes with a free motion quilting foot. It comes with like a whole bunch of accessories. Um, it's super easy to use. Um, I really don't have any complaints about it. I also have not used anything else. So like, I'm sure if I sat down at like a $500 Janome machine, I would be like, wow, I have been sewing on a piece of crap. <laughs> But it's really working well for me. So I've been meaning to tell you guys about that machine. I keep forgetting. 
It's a Brother CS 6000i, ordered on Amazon, 150 bucks, free shipping obviously because I, it was 150 bucks. Um, arrived like a couple days later and was, you know, the, the, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the travel it took across the country, it, it held up fine. Um, so yeah, so, okay, so the quilt, oh my gosh, rambling. Um, this quilt is <laughs> called, um, the Jolly Bon Bon quilt. It's a free quilt from Fat Quarter Shop. They have a, or a free quilt pattern. They have a ton of free patterns on their website. So it's a free quilt pattern. Um, a bon, or a Jolly Bar is a layer cake, like cut in half. So a layer cake of fabric is a 10 inch by 10 inch square, um, usually 42 pieces of fabric. And it's like a, a collection and you usually get like two print, like a collection might have 20 prints or so and you get two prints, um, two duplicate prints for all the pattern, all, all the prints in the collection. Um, so anyway, so it's, it's a 10 by 10 inch piece of fabric. A Jolly Bar is a five by 10 inch piece of fabric. And so this quilt is made with the Jolly Bar, which I think is a fat, it's a, Moda makes the, um, the fabric, but, um, I think it's a, a fat quarter shop exclusive. I, however, did not buy a Jolly Bar. I had a layer cake, which is a 10 by 10, and I was trying to figure out what to do with it, and I found this pattern, and I really like the pattern, so, um, I just cut my layer cake in half. Um, and now I actually have enough fabric to make two of these quilts. So I've made one, which I'm giving away, but I'm going to make another one and keep it for myself because I really do love how it turned out. Um, before I show you this quilt, let me just give you a heads up. The binding is not sewn down. It's sewn on, but I have to um, blind stitch it on the back. So pardon my binding. But here is my quilt. Um, so what I mean by the binding is it's not sewn down on the back. The back is still raw. So I have to flip this over and then blind stitch it on the back. Um, so maybe like two hours today and it'll be done. Uh, this is Moda Bonnie and Clyde, Bonnie and Clyde, Bonnie and Camille Smitten fabric is the fabric line. Priscilla and Chelsea have used it. It's super popular because it's beautiful. It has these bright, fun colors. Um, some aquas, reds, greens, corals. It's just gorgeous. And I mean, there's no way to really show you this whole quilt, but um, it makes this beautiful. Um, it's like a, a, it's a diamond. So it's a diamond and then like re echoing. Um, along. So like the center, maybe I can show you that. Or not, I don't know. I think that's the center. I can't see what I'm doing. Yeah, I think that's the center. Um, for quilting, this was my first time doing free motion quilting. So I did um, these little curly cues. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see them. And I did quilt as you go on this um, because I wanted to do intricate, in, intric, intricate, I was trying to say quilt. Um, I wanted to do some more intricate quilting. And for being the first time doing it, I thought doing quilt as you go where you make each block and quilt them and then assemble them would give me I wouldn't be fighting the quilt like the whole time. So I did do quilt as you go um, for this. And then the fat, the back is just a simple like gray plaid. Um, I, for the quilt as you go, there's different ways you can do that. I use um, Jara Brandywig's me method. Her book is called Quilt as You Go Made Modern. And I highly recommend that book. Um, I got it at Joann's with like a coupon or they're, they're usually 30% off. Um, I love that book. So if anyone wants to try Quilt As You Go, her method is super easy. 
Um, so yeah, so that's my quilt. Um, sorry, I can't like back up. I'm against the wall already and like really show you the whole thing, but I'll take a picture and put it on my Instagram. And then, um, the other quilt I made like a while back that I just hadn't had a chance to show you because I've been doing floss tube from my car and um, didn't want to take the whole quilt in my car <laughs> um, is um, this was a um, jelly roll. God, I could not think of what it was called. Um, this was a Moda jelly roll. Um, it's called the front porch and uh, the fabric line is called the front porch and um this was just a jelly roll race i think is what it's called um you just sew all the strips of the jelly roll together and then you um start to sew it on itself um i can't really explain it but it's super duper easy it's one of those like quilts you can make really quickly this one's dirty because it's been used um i need to wash it but um you don't really know what you're going to get until the end. Like you don't know how all your strips are going to come together. So it's kind of like a total surprise. You just sew your strips together and then you keep like having it. Um, and you kind of get what you get. Um, but it's a really beautiful, like summery fun quilt. And I do love it. I really love how it came out. Um, this was my first attempt at free motion quilting with just a simple wave, simple wavy line. Um, the other quilt I just showed you, I was doing like actually a more intricate pattern. This is just simple waves. Um, but I love the way it looks with this quilt and this fabric. Um, the back is just a nice simple like triangular pattern. I used um, like a bright coral thread, which is really fun for the quilting. You can see it more, I think, on the back. I mean, you can see it on the front probably too, but it, it, in person, I really do. I really like this quilt a lot. Um, I think I might have already put a picture of this on my Instagram. It's getting loved. The dog, my dog loves my quilts. I think it's I think it's because normally like in the living room we would use like the more fuzzy kind of throw blankets um which i think in the summer can get a little hot um these are nice and cool but i mean they're still really cozy but like the fabric just it feels good it's nice and cool um so i've been laying these on the couch this one's really dirty because the dog's been laying on it a lot i'm gonna wash it today actually but um he loves my quilts. He's like obsessed. Okay, so let's get back to cross stitching. That was my quilting. I'm going to finish up that quilt today and then I've got like six more already like planned. I've got like, I mean like fully kitted up quilts. <laughs> so however, I haven't been quilting a lot because I have been like super obsessed with cross stitching, which I mean, I always am obsessed with cross stitching. I always cross stitch. But I have been like just like not wanting to go quilt. I just want to cross stitch. Like I've been super into it. Um, stitch Mania might have played a little part in that. I'm not sure. Um, but I, yeah, I want to cross stitch a lot. And um, let me talk to you about Stitch Mania. Like I was really good. I was doing um, Fabulous Women in History by Clouds Factory. Um, I don't have a great picture of that. I have a picture I've written all over <laughs> um, because I've changed up some of the women. But I, uh, for Mania, I decided what I would do is um, for every two women I completed, I could have a new start. Um, but at times I would find myself not wanting to put this down. So I would stitch three or four women before I would allow myself a new start. Um, I've got so much done. I only have three women left and I will, uh, not put this away until it's done, but I haven't worked on it in a little bit cause I've wanted to work on other things, but I am itching to get back. I actually really wanted to work on this yesterday. I might work on it today. I'm itching to get back to it. So it's a big and it's a big piece. I really can't see what's going on in my camera. I'm sorry. 
I cannot tell what I'm doing. Um, I jumped ahead and did Malala. So because um, the bottom row, I really put a lot of alternate ladies in and I needed to like just make sure I had my spacing right. So I jumped ahead and did her. And then um, there's Ruth, Maya, and Frank. Um, you saw, I think last time I had Eva Perone done. Um, so since then I did and Frank, Maya Angelou, RBG, and Malala. So three more to go. It takes me about two or three days to do each lady, depending. A couple of them are more simple. Some of them are really detailed. <laughs> um, I think like another week of like focus and I could finish that. And I will. I will finish that eventually. Um, so anyway, so that was my mania was like, hey, do a couple ladies and then get a new start. But... Um, that also kind of set me off on a path of, I want to start everything. Um, some of it was because I kind of played in my stash and kitted some things up. And then I was like, I want to start all of these. Like, I can't just pick one. I want all of them. And I want them right now. Um, anyway, I kind of went off the rails. But the thing is, all year I'd had this thing of like, okay, two finishes and then you can have a start. Um... And I followed that until June, at which point I was like, I don't care anymore. I'm going to start what I want when I want. Um, so I got a couple new starts to show y'all, and you should wait and just see how much haul I have to show you guys. Um, but before I get into my new starts, I had, um, it snowed. <laughs> it snowed in May here in Colorado. That is not unusual. Um, it's pretty much an, a given that you you can expect snow up until Mother's Day, um, which is mid-May. And I think it was like May 13th or 14th, something like that, that we got snow. Um, I think we've gotten it as late as like May 22nd, um, but usually it's by mid-May. Um, we get one last snow. It doesn't really do anything. It's just like kind of like, oh, it's snowing and then it's gone. So I had to pull out Snow Queen one last time. I thought we were done, but we were not. So, um, in the middle of Mania, I did uh, spend one day and work some more on Snow Queen. I'm doing mine on 32 Count Polywog Princess by Hand Dyed by Stephanie. And I am doing a hair conversion. And several of you asked me for that, and I did post that in the description box of... I think it was the video before last. So I'm thinking it was video number 40. If you go to the description box, you can see my um, conversion for her hair. She has blonde, golden blonde hair in the pattern. I made it auburn red. Um, so I actually, I think what I did um, that snow day was like all this hair, I think is where, where I ended up. So there she is. She's beautiful, but she's going away for a while. Okay, let's get into some starts, some new starts. You all voted that you wanted me to start the Blue Flower Quilting Bee, which is no surprise. This pattern's amazing and super popular. So I was not surprised that that's what you guys wanted to see. I'm con I converted like all the flosses. I'm I just picked colors that looked close, like looking off the picture on the front. And this is a 36, uh, no, it's a 40 count X Jude design in gold sand is the color. Which, ooh, that's blown out. Mm. Never mind. Um. Anyway, I don't know if you can still get that. A lot of um, she sells on Etsy and I feel like she just does like everything's limited edition. So if you like something, I think you have to buy it right then because I don't think you're always going to be able to get it later. Um, anyway, I am obsessed with this. It's looking so good. There's my fabric. I hope that's showing up okay. I really can't see what I'm doing. Oh, it looks so good. I love it. It's so pretty. So pretty. 
but I can only work on that a couple days and then I had to get back to fabulous women so so then I got out HL moth HL's moth by Kathy Barrick um Diana it is kismet and Amy Baruch are doing a sal for this it's hashtag magical moth sal on Instagram and with this one, I also just um, pulled really random colors from my stash. It doesn't call for that many colors, so it was easy to do. And this is 32 count picture, this plus gothic. And um, this pattern is going so fast. I mean, I'm almost half done. It's, a, it's not that big. Um, I was inspired by this fabric choice because Diana from It Is Kismet, um, she is using her color and cotton um, from the Halloween box, which actually I have right here, so let me just grab it. She's using this limited edition um, color and cotton fabric, which is this, you know, really beautiful dusky navy. And I was gonna copy her, um, but when I actually like sat down and started looking and pulling fabric, um, I just liked the look of this one a little bit more. So I went with this one, but it was definitely like inspired by my, I was intending to copy her. <laughs> so, um, because it was a brilliant idea. So there's that. I do need to, I want to get back to all of these. Some of these I've had to set aside for a little while. Um, and then more recent starts. So I belong to a Facebook group called... It's something like sheep loving stitchers and it's just about, it's about stitching patterns that have sheep in them. It's on Facebook. Um, and someone posted, Hey, I found this designer. I think she's like a Russian designer. Um, and she has all these beautiful sheep patterns. And then like she posted this one, which does not have a sheep in it, but I was like, Oh my God, I love it. It's called it's peony season. Look how pretty it is. It The designer is Stitches Through the Years. She sells her patterns as PDFs. They're very affordable. I think this was like four or five dollars. Um, she sells on that Russian website, that vk.com, and I don't know how to use that site at all. So I just messaged her on Instagram and was like, hey, I'd really like to buy this pattern. I'm not sure how. And she was like, PayPal me 360 rubles or whatever, and I'll email it to you. And she did. It was awesome. It, it was super hassle-free, super easy. But I got this gorgeous pattern. And um, I just... Um, not called for colors. It calls for, um, a lot of col classic color works and gentle arts in like one week's, um, some of them I had, but it didn't fit and others I didn't have. So I just, you know, pulled from stash. Um, this is really fun to stitch. It's really, really delicate and pretty. So I just started up in the top left corner. I'm not sure how well that's showing up. This is the lady right here. This is the top corner. And this fabric is Exjude. It's a 46 count. Now this is my first uh, foray into a count that high. I've only done 40 count up until now. <sighs> this is a 46 count called Drapple Brown. It's absolutely stunningly gorgeous in person. I'm sure it's not going to really show up. I don't know. Maybe that almost, it looks like it might be kind of true. I'm not sure. Um, it's beautiful. It's, it's like a, it's a tannish, but it's almost got like a tiny bit of pinkish tint to it. It's not like a warm brown. It's a cool brown. It's just so beautiful. I have to really concentrate to do the 46 count, but it's not bad. I have, I have good eyes. I do great with 40 count. Um, but it's just so delicate and beautiful. And I just love this and I didn't want to put it away, but other things were calling. So um, I can't wait to get back to that. But 
peony season's over here, folks. I don't know about you, but it only lasts like a week here. <laughs> My peonies bloomed super late. I actually cut them one week ago and they're already done. Like I can't even show them to you because they're already like, Mwah. They bloomed really late this year, I think, because of um, it didn't warm up here until like the last week. It's been not warm here. My peonies were gorgeous, though. They really were. <sighs> um, okay, so then I started Design from the Primitive Hair. It's in Primitive Needle and Punch magazine. I don't know if I said that right, but you guys know the magazine I'm talking about. Um, it's in a back issue. I think it was, I think it's on here somewhere. May 2015. So the summer 2015 issue. It's a primitive hair. It's called In God We Trust. So this is my patriotic stitch that I just felt like stitching something patriotic. I am going to take In God We Trust off and put something else there because I don't stitch religion or religious things so but I love the people which I think I'm thinking they're George Washington and Martha Washington I got something else charted out for that I'm doing this with uh, colors from my stash and DMC that is called for um, on a 40 count primitive hair this is either Old Massachusetts or Old Salem. I can't remember which one, honestly. I love this fabric, though. It's just like a nice, like, dirty, grungy, golden tone. And I, um, this has been my lunchtime stitching for the last couple days, so haven't got a ton done. But it'll be a really quick stitch. It's super tiny. Okay, and then my last start. Yes. Let's let's count them. Well, knee high was a start, but I did finish it. Quilting Bee, HL's Moth, It's Peony Season, and God We Trust. That's five. And then here is my sixth start. And I was restrained because, like, trust me, I have, like, eight things sitting here that I desperately want to start. Um, my last start is Quaker Gone Hot It. Gone Haunted by Michelle Inc. from Needlework Designs. This was a Nashville market release. I was intrigued from the moment I saw this. I was like, I think I want that, but I could not um, find a clear picture like in March during the market and everything. Like everybody who was selling this just had like a little blurry picture. I couldn't really like make it out and I just I couldn't commit to it. I was like, I think I want it, but I'm not sure. Like, I can't really tell. And then finally, like, some better pictures came out. And I was like, yes, I do want that. I'm going to get that. So um, I'm going to zoom in so you guys can really see it in case you're like me and you were like, I'm a little bit on the fence because I can't really tell what's going on with this pattern. Let me just, like, give you a slow little perusal there. Um... The fun thing about this pattern is it only calls for five colors. However, they're thread gatherer silks, so they're not cheap, you know, but, but you only have to buy three of them. So, you know, so they're seven, eight bucks, but you only have to get three. And then it calls for two simply wool um, gentle arts, with, or three, because you have to buy two of one color. So three of those. So you have to buy six flosses total. So I bought, I splurged on the silks and the called fours. I am doing this on my color and cotton limited edition from their Halloween box. Not this dark one. It came, that Halloween box came with two fabrics. So not this one, but the other one. It's absolutely astoundingly gorgeous. I bet it's not going to show up on camera. This fabric is amazing. I don't know if it's going to show up. It's like a nice golden neutral with like purple and blue and teal modeling. It's awesome. And I think I'm going to have some left. Like I'm going to have 
like a little bit left at the bottom to use for another project. Um, this is so fun to stitch. This is what I'm stitching right now and I do not want to put it down. It is a blast. One of my silk ga uh, thread gatherer silken colors was on back order. So I'm having to jump around a little bit because I don't have the color for the rose that goes right here. Um, so I'm kind of just jumping around where I can. I love it. I, it's stitching really fast and it's really fun. And I, it's always a joy to stitch with silks, right? Always. Now stitching with the wools is interesting because it's, um, those stitches don't look as good. Um, so, so far I've only done this fill in here, this little bit of fill in with the wool and those stitches don't lay as well. Um, they're a little rough, but I think it's going to be a cool effect and it's going to give it more texture and it's going to be okay. This is 36 count and I'm doing one over two. Okay, so there's all my whips and new starts and all that good stuff. I have so much haul, it's embarrassing. I honestly think I might have been going through like a manic episode. Like I'm not even sure. Like that's how much crap I bought. It's not crap. It's fabulous. It's all amazing stuff. Um, but yeah, I might have been having a manic episode because whew, I hauled. I hauled big time. Um, I've already shown you some of my haul. So some of my haul included Quaker Gone Haunted. It included the Peony pattern. It included HL's Moth. I already had the Quilting Bee. Okay, so that was some of my haul. Um, this haul is in no order because I have so much of it, it's just in a pile. So first of all, um, I went to my LNS for last Sunday stitch in in May. I bought some stuff there. And then, who else did I buy from? Uh, then um, Shakespeare's Peddler had a little sale, so I bought from her. And then Threads Entwined had a little sale, so I bought from her. And then um, I bought a few like Etsy patterns. So, so first of all, um, at my LNS, which is a stitching shop, it's in Denver. It's a suburb of Denver called Lakewood, but it's Denver basically. Um, they, let me find, I'm trying to find what I actually bought from them, just to be a little bit on topic. Um, <laughs> the first thing I couldn't resist was this thread keep. It's a coffin and it's awesome. They had, um, they also had like they had some steampunk ones, like a clock and a boot, like a lady's steampunk boot. It was cool. They had some cool ones. Um, my, my LNS is called a stitching shop and it's in Denver and she will, you can do phone orders and she'll ship to you too. But if you're ever in Denver, like go and check this place out. But, um, I don't know where she got these. So if you want one, just call her. And what else did I get from her? Oh, I got some fabric for my, um, wizard pattern. This is DMC, no, Dimensions. The Enchanter is the pattern. And I wanted some some really dark, like crystal, opalescent fabric. Um, so I got, and I got the Krynix that that pattern calls for too. The rest of it's DMC. So I got Picture This Plus 28 Count Lugana which I haven't ever stitched on Lugana. Well, maybe, but not really. Um, this is Crystal Shadow. So it's like a really dark with tons of iridescence, which who knows how that's going to show up for you guys. It looks almost like it's one color, but there is modeling in there. I promise. And lots of sparkle. I don't know when I'm going to start that, but... I needed fabric for that. And then I had decided to restart my Chatelaine, one of my Chatelaines. I have more than one. Um, my, um, I'm trying to find a picture. Sorry. My, um, 
Chatelaine, it's the Alpine Garden, but it's the Outlander edition. So it's called... It's called the Alpine Garden Mandala Spe Special Outlander Edition. And there's no good pictures of it on the website because no one had... St well, now people have finished it, but at the time no one had done it because it was... People had done the Alpine Garden, but not the Outlander version. Which for the Outlander version, she added... Um, like the Fraser plaid is right here. And she added um, the Fraser model... Motto, which is Jesu Pre and um like a couple other little like knots to outlander and it's beautiful and you know here's what it would look like on a lighter fabric i suppose so i had started it on a 36 count which is a huge mistake i thought i could get away with it because there's very little beading in this pattern but it was not working like at all so i bought new fabric for that so that i can restart that and I bought, um, it's a fabric flare, which I haven't used before, but it was just the perfect color. It's a fabric flare called Historic Green, and it's a 32 count. And it's really, really pretty and really big because Chatelaines are huge. <laughs> Look how big this is. I don't know how well it's going to show up for you, but it's just a really pretty, like, subtle green modeled it's really nice and it's going to be perfect for that pattern. Um, I haven't restarted it yet, but I desperately want to restart it like right now, but I haven't. Um, and then also from a stitching shop, I picked up Plum Street Samplers, A Gentleman's Daughter. I love this. It's beautiful. And it's kind of patriotic, like unintentionally, but like it's got a lot of red, white, and blue. So it's a little tempting to stitch that now. And then um, I've been meaning to buy this forever and ever and ever, and I really don't know why I haven't. Well, I know why I haven't, because every time I like, I'm making a purchase, I'm like, oh, I'll get that later, because it's like 20 something dollars, or I don't know what it is, $28, and you know, I'm always like, oh, I'll get that next time. And I don't know. I just kept putting it off. And finally, I was like, I'm going to buy this. <laughs> I am going to buy this. It might go out of print and then I'll be really mad. It's Blackbird Designs Sisters is um, the book. And I, like I said, it's been on my wish list for like two years. So I finally just buckled down and bought it. I love, I want to stitch literally everything in here. And that's unusual because usually... In these books, there's one or two that I'm like, eh, eh. like it's fine. I could take it or leave it. But in this one, I'm like, yep, everyone. I want everyone. Um, let me just show you some of them. There's this one. It's called At First Cox Crow. And then there's Peace and Plenty. This is like, so the rest of the samplers have like almost like a Halloween feel. And then this one's like Christmas. It's a little random. But it's pretty. I want to stitch every single one of these. This is Witch No More. There is a style going on for this one and it's awesome and I want to do it. I think Elena B is hosting that style. And then the other two, so I showed you those two. The other two, it only has a picture of the originals, I think, not the reproductions. But I'll show you what they look like. They are, I think that's the original. And then, and it's two sisters, which is why it's called sisters. Um, so there's the other sister. So, um, a lot of good charts in there and I want to do them all. I don't have plans to start those right away, but like eventually. Um, okay. And then, oh, while I was at the stitching sh shop, Christine Calico Stitches, also called Calico Whimsy. I can never remember. I think on, I think on Flosstube she's Calico Stitches, but on Instagram she's Calico Whimsy. Um, anyway, she, um, 
she uh, lives in the Denver area as well. Um, so she was at the Sunday, last Sunday stitch in and she was like, Hey, do you want this project bag? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> Here's the back. Um, yes, I would love this project bag. <laughs> uh, I've been using it already. I took out, I took it out so that I could show you guys. Um, I'm not going to tell her story. Um, it is a hilarious story, but she, um, she had made this project bag for someone else and ultimately decided that that person was not deserving. Um, but I'm, that's all I'm going to say. And so she's like, I don't like Star Wars. Like, I don't want it, which that made my heart hurt a little bit that she doesn't like Star Wars. But the good thing is it means I got the Star Wars bag. So I absolutely love it. Um, she even made the cutest little needle minder right here. She took from the fabric and made a little needle minder that matches. It's a stormtrooper. How cute is that? Um, I'm going to try to make project bags really soon. Um, Jen Crafts, it's Jen with two N's, so J-E-N-N -N Crafts. She is a floss tuber and she just did um, a project bag tutorial like a couple days ago and it, I'm going to use her tutorial and try to make one. It, it look, her bag looks a lot like this actually. Um, and she has two sizes and it just, her tutorial was like super easy. Like I watched it and I was like, I can do that. <laughs> so I'm going to try her tutorial. But if anyone's looking for a, a good, um, simple, easy project bag tutorial, I highly recommend hers. Um, I haven't actually put it into action yet, but just watching it, it was very clear and I was like, got it. I can do it. Um, so that was my gift. Um, oh, and Christine also made these cute little needle minders. One of them is on another project. Here it is. Here's the other one. Um, these are these little metal Jane Austen books. And she just, I mean, she just glued a magnet onto them. Super simple. I think she got these at Hobby Lobby but they're perfect. They're like nice and small for those small projects and they're really strong. So, um, I love those too. Okay. What else did we get? So that was all my local stuff, I think. And then I had a gift certificate to Country Sampler in Spring Green, Wisconsin. And I think this is some of what started my, like unleashed the spending dragon. Um, had a gift certificate. I got it for my birthday in January from my mom and I've just been sitting on it like waffling indecisive on what I wanted to use it on and I finally was like I need to use this. You know she bought it for me in January. I need to use it. So I did and then I think that just kind of set me over the edge and I just started buying all the things. But what I got from Spring Green Country Sampler was uh, the new Plum Street Peace, Love, and Purpose, but fully kitted up. This is another patriotic stitch I want to start. Comes with 36 count linen and all the called for, I think it's all weeks. And then I also got the uh, Stacy Stacy Nash Primitives Gathering the Green Sampler fully kitted with the 36 count linen and all the fa uh, floss, which I think are also weeks. So one thing about this sampler, I've, I've wanted it for a long time, but I, I keep waffling and here's why. I love Stacy Nash, love Stacy Nash, but this is a terrible picture, Stacy. I'm sorry, but this is, I, I just don't think it does justice. It's too washed out or something. And it's, um, it's got like a, pinkish look to it which it's not you know like this is like a yellow house which is cool um I just don't I don't think I, I don't think this pattern is as popular as maybe it would be because the picture just does not show off how pretty it is um and I think I looked on like I googled and found someone who had stitched it 
um, where, you know, it was just a clearer picture. And I was like, oh yeah, I definitely want that. Yep. Like I'd been like thinking I wanted it. And then I was like, yeah, I for sure want it. So, um, fully kitted up. And then I got this, um, not kitted up, just a pattern. Plum Street Samplers, a ladies trim keep. I love this one. And it was on sale. So it was like five bucks. So that was my country sampler haul. And then from, um, you know what? I can't remember what I got from where. I'll be honest. Um, no, I do. I got it. Okay. From Teresa, Kitten Stitcher, Shakespeare's Peddler. I bought two patterns. Um, the first is this Reflet de Soie. Anais Courvour, 1896. This is this company does French samplers. They're gorgeous. Um, however, this is gorgeous, right? Little did I know when I bought it how humongous it is. It is... 339 by 402. It is huge. All of their patterns always call for a soie, overa soie silks. Uh, I can't afford that. So this might be done in DMC, but look how like it's just so colorful. I really love, um, if you want I love the prim, rustic looking samplers. Like, obviously, I just bought a bunch of them and showed them to you. I love this kind of style of sampler, but I also really love these bright, colorful French samplers. And if you're into that, this Reflet de Soie has about a hundred of them. And they're all just so bright and cheerful and colorful and pretty. So go check them out if you're into that. But just look how bright and pretty it is. But it's huge. It's a big one. It's got a French verse on it. No idea what it says. I don't know. The pattern is in French too. So it's not like it's translated there for me. Ooh. I guess I should say if any of you know French. Like tell me what it says. Let me try to like really zoom in there for you. Let me make sure there's not more. Yeah. What does that say? Debbie? Snug Harbor Debbie? Don't you speak French? Debbie, what does that say? Or anybody else out there who speaks French. Let me know. Let me know. Um, and then I got... Um, I don't know why I had waited so long on this one. I really don't. I got Eliza Belcox from Hands Across the Sea because it's gorgeous. And every time um, people show it, I die a little bit inside because it's amazing. I don't know. I was in a treat yourself kind of mood for real. Like I was like, oh, $30. Okay, sure. Whatever. Um, so then from um, Threads Entwined, they had a little sale. And let me tell you, if you guys want to order something online and you want it super fast, order from Threads Entwined. I ordered on Thursday, maybe like lunchtime-ish, like midday. I ordered on Thursday. I got it on Saturday. Like she shipped it out on Thursday. I got it on Saturday. Awesome. So I ordered from her, and we're almost done, guys, I promise. It's a long video. Um, I ordered Blackbird Designs, Merrily, Merrily, We Welcome Spring, another one I had been waffling on. And here's why. It's gorgeous, but here's why I'm waff I was waffling. This fabric is too dark. I don't like it. I'm going to brighten it up. To me, that's not spring. It's like so dark and gloomy. So I'm going to definitely do a lighter fabric, make those colors look a little brighter. And I think I'm going to like it a lot more, but I, I loved it since it came out. And every time I see someone stitching it, like on Instagram, I'm like, Oh, I love it. But then I'm like, I don't, when they're doing the called fours, it's too dark. I don't know why. I just realized that sounds really rude. Blackbird designs 
Barb and Alma are geniuses who make the most beautiful patterns and they're, I mean, I love them and there's nothing wrong with this. My preference is that it will be lighter and um, it was their design choice and there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, if I stitched it exactly as called for, I'd probably love it still but I just I was waffling I kept waffling on do I want it do I not want it do I want it do I not want it and then I finally realized why I was waffling was because to me this fabric is too dark to show off the beauty of this sampler so I'm gonna brighten it up a little whenever I get around to it. I, I don't plan to start it right away. Um, and then I also bought Blackbird Designs Sweet Land of Liberty. I've just been meaning to buy it and I'm in a mood. I was in a mood for patriotic stitching for sure. Um, I do like, I think every pattern in here. Yeah, I do. I like every pattern in here, but the one I specifically love, love, love is Salute to Abigail. I love this one. So that's probably going to be one of the first ones I do. And then lastly, I bought another Hands Across the Sea sampler. This is Jennifer Gilbert, 1818. And it's beautiful. Um, so, as you all probably know, samplers tend to have religious verses. Because that's just how it was, right? Like, the little girls who were stitching these samplers... We're prone to put biblical verses in there. Um, so when I find one that does not have an overtly religious um, phrase, I'm more drawn to it. And this one, I just love all the pinks and blues as well. Like, I just love the colors. But um, the, fra the, the verse is not overtly religious. Um... Like a lot of them are like, Lord Jesus, like, and I'm like, I, I can't, I, I can't. So, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend any religious people, but that's not for me. So, um, anyway, about that one. I'm not reading that verse, it's too long. Okay, my last, last haul. Oh my God, I'm tired. I'm hungry. It's lunchtime. My last bit of haul um, came out of nowhere. I did not. Oh, I don't have a picture of it. Oh, crud. This is all pattern. Um, Caterpillar Cross Stitch is doing a sal right now called Hello Pumpkin. And it is so cute. I cannot even. And it's a, it's a little thing. It's going to be released in five parts. Um, the second part was just released and it's like 129 by 162. It's all DMC. It's, it's, I think I can catch up. Um, it is so cute. I'm going to show you just a, a quick little bloop, like from far away of, so you can get kind of a feel for it. But it's called Hello Pumpkin by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. This is part one and two. You can't really see anything. It's a cute little tree with a little owl and some cute little pumpkins. It's so cute. I really want to start it like right now, but I feel like I should wait a little bit. The next part comes out July 18th, so I got time. So I'm trying to like hold myself back, but I want to start it like right now. Um, who knows? You'll see next video what I did. Okay, so I think that's everything. Uh, honestly, I probably forgot something because there is a lot. There is a lot around me right now. But um, I think that's everything. So, um, woo! Okay, so thanks for watching. And um, I will see you soon. Hopefully it won't be so long before I see you again. Bye, everybody!